Welcome to another custom minis for Tailspire tutorial. So here's the situation. You've got Tailspire, you've modded your Tailspire, you're loving the plugins, you're loving the custom uh, minis, but some of your players see modding their Tailspire game as the sign of Satan and refuse to do it. Okay, well, they definitely won't be able to use any of the plugins, but you'd still like at least to get some custom minis into the game. That's what this video is all about. We are going to take some custom minis and we are going to apply the uh, trick to make these minis work in a completely vanilla Tailspire or in a Tailspire that has been modded that is not running the CALP plugin. Uh, so normally if you're using custom uh, minis, uh, the way you do that is you use the CALP plugin, the custom uh, asset library plugin, uh, and that enables uh, the custom minis to, uh, to work. Um, but there is an extra step that you can take to then make those custom minis work without having to have that plugin present, which means that they will work even with a vanilla Tailspire. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so in order to do this, you will need to have a computer that does have a modded Tailspire to create or prepare the assets. After that, you don't need the modded Tailspire anymore, okay? But you do need a modded Tailspire for at least uh, some time to prepare uh, the assets. So that's what we've got here. I've got um, my Tailspire plugins folder. I have created the local content folder that we typically use uh, to add uh, custom uh, content that is not downloaded from uh, Thunderstore. I could be doing this with a Thunderstore uh, downloaded uh, folder. That's not a problem. Um, here, I've just chosen to go with some local content. Okay, so um, I've got the custom data subfolder uh, within it. I have a bunch of different um, uh, custom minis. Okay, and so what we're going to do is on a modded Tailspire, we're going to run uh, Tailspire so that this content gets registered. Okay, that is a necessary step. Uh, that's why we do need at least one modded Tailspire uh, to prepare this. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so once in Tailspire, I am going to uh, wait a moment to uh, let the assets get registered. Um, you can uh, verify this by uh, bringing up the console that gets uh, launched with a mod Tailspire. And once you basically see that the uh, console has stopped scrolling, adding more um, entries to the log, um, it's basically registered the assets. You don't really need to even load a board. You, you could, but there's no real point because the registration process happens um, at the very beginning in the main screen here. So uh, we see here that uh, it stopped scrolling. It's not adding any more entries to the log. Uh, so it is safe to assume that the registration pr uh, process has completed. So let's verify that. So toggling back to my contents folder, we can see that it indeed did get registered. We can see that the custom folder has been renamed to uh, assets. We can see that we now have a portraits uh, folder. And most importantly, we can see that we have the um, index folder. Uh, you may not have the index.json. Um, the latest version of Calpi doesn't need this anymore. Um, the Calpi talks to uh, the um, writing process directly. It no longer uses a file, but there is a setting to generate that file for troubleshooting purposes. So you may not have this. Uh, you should have uh, these two files. Um, they are created during the registration process. Um, this file is the file that you can use to uh, do the um, register for vanilla hack to allow your assets to be used um, 
in uh, vanilla Tailspire, but actually it's there is an easier process where you don't really need to even use this uh, batch file at all and that's what we're going to go through today okay so so far the process has been um the same as it would be for regular modded tailspire um, this registration process is what happens when you use the kelp uh, plugin um, so so far nothing has changed but now we are going to take an extra step and that is <clears throat> the kelp uh, plugin tells tailspire where to find this folder normally core tailspire doesn't look in any plugins folder so it wouldn't see this folder at all the kelp plugin is what tells tailspire to look in alternate places for its content now since we're not going to be using the kelp, kelp pl uh, plugin we need to put this content in a location where the core tailspire expects it so what we're going to do is we're going to take one step out we're going to cut that uh, folder and then we are going to go to the location of our game folder so for me that happens to be okay uh, your location may be slightly different depending on where you have your steam installed but generally it's in a steam folder steam apps common and then the application name in this case tailspire <clears throat> so once we are in tailspire we are going uh in the tailspire game uh, folder we are going to go to the tail weaver folder okay in the tail weaver folder you should see a, a couple of um folders here uh these are the core ts content folders uh, one of those is the fantasy pack the other one is the cyberpunk pack and then you have tutorials um, <clears throat> if you are looking at this uh, uh, tutorial much later there it's a possibility that there will be more folders here as uh, tailspire adds more content uh, don't worry about that so now what we're going to do is we are going to paste our custom folder here so now we've placed our content in a location that core tailspire will look for it but we're not quite done yet because there is another condition for tailspire to recognize the folder and that is that it needs to follow a specific naming convention it needs to have the name of a GUID what I recommend doing is going into your local content folder if you've generated the index.json file um, open it up wow my computer is slow today okay and you will see that the file has a asset pack id so we'll just copy that and rename the folder to that asset pack and that's basically it now tailspire should recognize that content even if we are not running kelp so let's give that a try i am going to start vanilla so that means no plugins uh, i will not have access to any of my plugins but if we did this correctly <clears throat> i should still see the custom asset that i have added okay we're gonna load a board here and see if our custom assets show up So if we go down here, we can see that all those custom content 
are there. We are running a tail, uh, a vanilla tail spire, no mods whatsoever, out of the box tail spire, and we have custom minis available. So that's what this hack is, or this trick is all about. Now, those of you who are observant may uh, ask the question uh, that when you register a asset pack, it generates a register for vanilla batch file. So what is that about? We, we didn't use it at all. Why is that there? Well, what the register for um, vanilla batch file does is in this particular case, we took the actual content, the actual folder with all the content and put it into the game directory so that Tailspire could find it. That's one way of doing it. What the register uh, for vanilla batch file does is it allows you to keep that content somewhere else and it creates a, um, a fake, uh, a link directory in the game folder where we copied the, the, um, our content that points to the other location. So instead of um, actually moving the content into the Tailweaver uh, folder, it creates a symbolic link there that points to our uh, folder. Either way works. Um, the way we did it is a little bit easier because you don't need to run the batch file. Running the batch file is not difficult, but you need to provide it uh, certain parameters like the location of your uh, Tailweaver folder and, and so on. Um, so copying the folder over, I think, is a little bit easier. Uh, the advantage of using the register for vanilla batch file is that all of the content can now stay outside the game folder. So <clears throat> in the game folder, all you're adding is a link. You're not adding actual assets there. So that means you can keep all of your custom assets somewhere else and um, not be really impacting the game folder itself. So it's, it's a little bit easier to clean up. Um, otherwise, uh, if you then want to remove the custom assets, it's just a matter of going back into the Tailweaver folder and deleting that whole folder. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, having said that, uh, it's a good idea to keep track of which folders were which. It's not that difficult if you need to, if you've forgotten which one was uh, the custom, um, the, the, the custom minis and which ones were core, it's not that difficult to figure it out. Um, if you go inside a custom one, you will see that it has the assets, it has a portraits file, and typically it has, uh, the, well, definitely the index, but typically it has the, the couple of other files. If you go into a core one, uh, you can see that it has an assets, it does not have a portraits file. The portraits are outside directly. And then you have your index file and your uh, index JSON file. So um, by looking at the folders and not seeing a portraits subfolder, it tells you that that's a core, <coughs> uh, core folder. Whereas if you uh, find the portraits subfolder there, um, you know that that's custom. Um, of course, Right now, it's fairly easy to, uh, to keep track of these two IDs here, uh, our core and the, anything else would be uh, non-core. But as I said, we, uh, if uh, Tailspire expands its content, there may be more of these folders and then it will become somewhat more difficult to remember which ones are core and which ones are not. So that's about it. Okay, okay, couple things to note. Um, these things are obvious to me, but uh, uh, you know, they may not be obvious to others. So uh, let me uh, clear them up. So one thing uh, is we were talking about using custom minis on a completely unmodded Tailspire, yet the process here involved a modded Tailspire, at least for the beginning. Yes, uh, as I said, you do need 
at least one modded Tailspire to set this all up. But once you've created that folder, so uh, in this case, this was our folder, you can now take that folder and copy it to any other player's unmodded vanilla Tailspire and it will work. So again, you do need at least one modded Tailspire to perform this process to create the folder. But once that folder is created, you can then copy it to any other device and those custom minis will be uh, available even if it's a vanilla uh, Tailspire. In theory, you could even then uninstall your own mod uh, manager and run your completely vanilla uh, Tailspire with those uh, with that folder and get access to those custom minis. Obviously, if everyone has is running a vanilla, then you will not have uh, the opportunity to make more custom minis because again, you need at least one modded instance in order to create the folder. But once the folder is created, you can distribute it and the mod is no longer needed. Okay. That's one clarification. The other clarification is um, if you have many custom uh, folders here and you are looking to delete a specific one, but you have forgotten what the ID was, well, it's going to take some work. But uh, if you have generated the index.json files, by opening those up, you can see what uh, assets those uh, that particular folder contains. So <clears throat> if you have, let's say, a dragon pack that you're trying to get rid of and you've forgotten which ID it is, yes, you'll have to go through each folder until you find it. But by opening up the index.json files, you can very um, quickly do a search for the asset. If it shows up, you know you've got the right folder and you can delete that folder as opposed to doing something like deleting the folder one by one and running Tailspire each time to see which content it deleted. So not the quickest uh, solution, but it is a solution if you've for forgotten what uh, pack IDs um, refer to what content. And now that's really it. 